Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to discuss how we evaluate authentication systems. If we're going to choose between different authentication technologies, we need a common way to talk about how well they work. I'm going to cover three important metrics. The false acceptance rate, FAR, the false rejection rate, FRR, and the crossover error rate, CER. Let's start by taking a quick step back and discussing authentication systems more generally. Now, you might already know that the purpose of an authentication system is to make sure that someone is who they claim to be before granting them access to a system, building, or other resource. We use authentication all the time. If you think about your day today, you've probably authenticated to a computer system using a password, confirmed your identity to your phone using fingerprint recognition, and used an access card to enter a building or a parking lot. We use these different types of authentication all the time, and they fit into the three main categories of authentication systems. Something you know, like a password, something you are, such as your face or fingerprint, and something you have, like an access card. Today, we're going to dive deeper into the second category, something you are, which is also known as biometric authentication. When we're performing biometric authentication, the systems that we use sometimes make mistakes. It might be that your fingerprint is a little smudged, you've gained a little weight, or even that you've combed your hair differently. Our biometric characteristics change over time, and systems need to have a little wiggle room in them as they identify us. If you think about it, that's the same way that our brains work. If my wife goes to the salon and gets a haircut that changes her entire appearance, I'd better still be able to recognize her when she comes home. When we add this wiggle room to biometric systems, we also introduce the possibility for errors. If I don't provide the system with enough wiggle room, it might reject a legitimate user. On the other hand, if I provide the system with too much wiggle room, it might grant access to someone who isn't who they claim to be. This leads us to the different types of mistakes that biometric systems can make. When someone attempts to authenticate to a system, there are two possibilities. They either are who they claim to be, or they're not who they claim to be. And the system can make two decisions. It can accept the user's claim, or reject the user's claim. What we want to happen is we want the system to accept users who are who they claim to be, and reject users who are not who they claim to be. Those are the correct decisions. However, if the system isn't working properly, it might make mistakes. If the system rejects a user who actually is legitimate, that's a false rejection. We've refused someone access who should have been granted access, and they're probably going to get upset. If the system accepts a user who is not who they claim to be, that's a false acceptance. That's a really serious error because we've just granted someone access who shouldn't have that access. When we're testing a system, we can measure the number of times that these errors occur and use those measures to talk about the error rate of the system. If we take the number of false acceptances and divide it by the total number of access attempts, we get the false acceptance rate, or FAR. That's the percentage of time that the system accepts someone who it should have rejected. Similarly, if we take the number of false rejections and divide that by the total number of access attempts, we get the false rejection rate, or FRR. That's the percentage of time that the system rejects someone that it should have accepted. Now, the FAR and FRR tell us part of the picture, but neither one of them is the best way to evaluate a biometric authentication system. There's a better approach. Before I tell you about that better approach, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. 
The reason that we don't want to rely on the false acceptance rate or false rejection rate to evaluate how well a system works is that those measures are easy to alter. If we adjust the sensitivity of the authentication system, that changes the false acceptance rate and the false rejection rate. Think about it this way. If we turn the sensitivity all the way down and make the system incredibly generous, it's just going to accept everybody. That guarantees us a false rejection rate of 0% because we're not rejecting anybody. Now, on the other hand, if we turn the sensitivity of the system all the way up and tell the system to just reject everybody, that gives us a false acceptance rate of 0% because we're rejecting everyone. Now, of course, those systems wouldn't be very useful, but they illustrate the point. In order to really evaluate the effectiveness of an authentication system, we need a measure that combines the false acceptance rate and the false rejection rate. What we do is adjust the sensitivity of the system until we find the point where the false acceptance rate and false rejection rate are equal to each other. This balancing point is something that can't be gamed, and it's called the crossover error rate, or CER. That CER is the best way to measure the effectiveness of a biometric authentication system because it provides us with a fair way to compare the effectiveness of different systems. I hope this video helped you understand how to evaluate authentication systems using the false acceptance rate, false rejection rate, and the crossover error rate. If it did, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.